Hmm, complex data and endless formulas slowing you down? I have a perfect solution for you. Excel just got a major upgrade. There's a new copilot function that allows you to use AI directly in the grid itself. Just like any other formula, you can type equal copilot directly into a cell, reference your data and get answers or insights right where you need them. In this video, we'll explore what's new, how it works and the ways it can help you save time. Ready to learn? Let's get started. Hi, I'm Pratap Narula, an investment consultant and educator and let's dive in here. I am in Microsoft Excel, the application that runs most businesses in the world, including the company I work at, the Cookie Company. Let's start with a really simple example of how to use the new copilot function. First, simply click into a cell. Start with an is equal to, so here I'll type in equal. And then we type in the function name, which is copilot. Here you'll see that it pops up as one of the available functions. Now we need to feed arguments into the function. To do that, we are going to open the parentheses. And here we see a helpful guide to help us feed in all these different arguments. Now, it wants a prompt. And we're going to keep this really simple. Open quotes and type in a prompt. Give me three cookie types. Close the quotes. Close the parentheses and then simply hit enter. And this gives me three different cookie types. You will notice that here it spills into the adjacent cells along with simply entering in a prompt directly into the function. You can also reference other cells. Now right over here, I have a column where I would like to enter the description of each one of these cookies. Let's see if we could use the copilot function to do this. I'll click into cell B2 and once again. Enter in the copilot function. So equal copilot and now it wants the prompt. Let's type that in. Give me a description of each. And here I'll close that off. That's my prompt. But now I need to tell the function or I need to tell copilot what I would like a description of. So let's enter that. Comma. And now I could enter in the context or the second argument of this function over here. I'll highlight these three different cells with my different cookie types. Then let's close the parentheses, hit enter, and now copilot working. I get a description of each one of those cookies. And honestly, this looks good. We are in our marketing materials here at the cookie company. We get a tons of customer feedback. Let's see if the copilot function can help us quickly gauge the sentiment behind it. Here's a list of feedback that we've received here at the cookie company. I'm hoping it's all positive. But you don't really know until you dig in. I'd like to figure out the sentiment. So is it positive? Is it average or is it negative? So I would also like to categorize the feedback. Is it related to the product quality or maybe the customer service? It's important to have categories. Let's see if we could use the copilot function to help us here too. Let's start with the is equal to and then type in copilot. Open the parentheses. And we have to enter in the prompt dot. Let's start by saying evaluate these reviews. That's my prompt. Comma. Now we have to feed in the context. I would like it to evaluate all of these different customer reviews. So I'm going to reference these cells. Okay. Here's the cool thing. You can also enter a second prompt and also reference additional data in the copilot function. And here we're going to insert the second part of our prompt. I want to base it on these different column headers. So the headers that we saw in B1 and also C1 over here. Let's close the quotes, enter another. And here I'm going to enter in B1 through C1 and I'll close the parentheses. Now you can't see those column headers right now, but those values are right underneath over here. Now let's hit enter and Copilot is now processing and look at that. Here I get all of the sentiment and over on the side, I also get the category. Let's have a quick look just to make sure that it worked as we expected to. Here it says delicious cookies with a perfect balance of sweetness. Highly recommend. That sounds positive to me. Here it says positive and it's related to the taste. The cookies were a bit too dry for my taste, but the flavor was good. So it has both negative and positive. 
and here it calls out neutral. Here the cookies arrived stale, which was disappointing. Here it's negative, and that's related to the quality. This is working exactly how I would expect it to. So now instead of me sorting through all this feedback and putting down the sentiment and the category, I could just rely on Copilot to do this for me. When we look at this sentiment column, currently it just has text positive, neutral, or negative. I like just having a symbol, bit more visual. So up on top, let's change this column header. Currently it says sentiment. But we change that to sentiment as positive, squiggly line or negative. Press enter and see if Copilot can factor that in. Here I get a symbol and I can very quickly look at this to figure out if it's positive or negative. That helps, but I think a summary of the data would be even better. Next, we're going to look at how we could use the Copilot function together with other functions in Excel. I'd like to get a quick summary of all this data that we see here. It's hard to tell if it's mostly positive, neutral, or negative. So, we can use the group by function. Quickly summarize this customer feedback, insert the group by function, let's enter the is equal to and type in the function name, group by open the parentheses, and down below we see all of the different arguments that we have to feed into this function, starting with the row fields. Well, this is the column or the columns that we want to group. Why? I want to group by all of these different symbols. So I'll highlight these cells now that I entered in the first argument, comma, and now we have to enter in the values. This is the data that we want to calculate or summarize for each group. In my case, we're counting up the number of these different symbols that appear. So again, highlight all of these different cells, comma, and then I need to specify the function that I would like to use. Well, I simply want to count the number of these different symbols. So, we are going to use the count A function. Now that I entered in all of the different required arguments, let's close the parentheses and then hit enter. Look at that. We have four pieces of negative feedback, one neutral and here we have five positive feedbacks for a total of 10 pieces of feedback. Hopefully you're starting to see the power of using the copilot function. Now here's another neat thing. As our data changes, the copilot function automatically recalculates. Now you'll notice here we have a mix of feedback. But what if I change all of this to positive feedback? This is after all the cookie company and we only get the best reviews. If I click into sell it to, you'll see that I use the copilot function to generate all of this feedback. Here it says give me 10 reviews. Give me a mix of positive and negative. But let's change this. Give me only positive feedback. Press enter and here it regenerates 10 pieces of feedback. And if we look over here, they're all positive. And if we look at our group by table, we have 10 pieces of feedback and they're all positive. That's what I would expect. Let's move on and look at how Copilot can extract data from text and we'll set it up so it works in a highly scalable way across large amounts of text. On this sheet, I have a list of customers who have requested a callback. To make this a little bit more efficient for me, I'd pull out the name and also the phone number of the customer. That way I don't have to fumble through. So right over here, let's use the Copilot function. I'll enter equal. And then here let's type Copilot. Open parenthesis. And then I need to enter in my prompt. Extract the name here. Comma. And then, I need to reference the cells. Over here, I'll reference all of these cells. Then close the parentheses and hit enter. And let's see if we can pull out the name. Here I have Sarah. And then Mike and it looks like it successfully pulled out the name from all these different requests. Over here, I would like to extract the phone number. And for this too, we could also use the copilot function. It works well. But let's say you have hundreds or thousands of rows you need to extract data from. You probably don't want to call copilot for each one. Since there's a limit to the number of calls you can make, instead we can make it more efficient. We can have Copilot help us figure out how to extract the data across a large data set. Using a regex function or a regular expression function. A regex function in Excel lets you use a search pattern to quickly find, extract or replace specific text within a cell. Let's use Copilot to generate the pattern and then we'll switch to native Excel to scale it. Let's click into cell C1. Let's type in the copilot function. Here I'll type in equal copilot and then parenthesis. Now for the beginning part of my prompt, I want a regex pattern. That will pull out the phone number. I'll type in my prompt, return a regex pattern to match. And then let's close the quotes, insert a comma. And then I wanted to pull out the phone number over here. 
I'll select cell C2, which simply says phone number. Then let's insert a comma. And then we're going to enter in our second prompt. Then I'll type in from this example. I wanted to look at this example right here. Let's close the quotes, insert a comma. And then here I'll reference this cell right here. And then let's close the parentheses and hit enter. And let's see if we could pull a regex pattern. Now that may look very complex, but this pattern will extract the phone number from this text. This cell right here. This pattern may look like foreign text, but it's actually very logical. It's looking for a phone number within three digits, a close, three more digits, a dash, and then four digits at the end. If you look at all the phone numbers, they all match that pattern. Now that we have the pattern, we can place it into a regex extract function. Pull out the phone number over here. I click into cell C3 and then let's type in regex extract. There we see the function name. Now first, I need to insert the text where I want to extract from. I'll select this cell, comma, and right above I have my pattern that Copilot returned. I'll click on this. Then let's close the parentheses. Hit enter and beautiful, it pulls out the phone number. Let's apply this formula to all the rows below. But before I could do that, I need to make this an absolute reference. That way they all reference this specific cell. To do that, I'll place my mouse cursor here, press the F4 key, and that will lock both the column. In the row, then I'll press enter and over here I can now align this all the way down and look at that. We now have phone numbers extracted from all these different callback requests. This is all dynamic. Let's say if instead of getting the phone number, I just want the area code, I'll click into this cell right here and let's remove phone number and instead say area code from phone number. Then I'll press enter and here Copilot updates the pattern and then here the regex extract function uses that new pattern to pull out the area code from all the phone numbers. That is so cool. But there are a few things to keep in mind. The Copilot function is not designed for heavy math or massive data sets. Excel has existing functions for those. But for everyday work, it's a time saver. You'll need a Microsoft 365 Copilot license tied to a worker school account. Unfortunately, no personal accounts yet. And remember, the results recalculate every time you open the sheet. So if you like something you see, make sure to save it. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. And don't forget to like, subscribe and support us for future videos and to continue our efforts.